Hello everyone, and welcome to Austintronics. Have you ever wondered how a robot makes sense of the 3D world we live in? Now I know you may be thinking about some type of sensor, right? Maybe something like a camera, or a GPS, or maybe even an attitude heading reference system coupled with a Doppler velocity log. It's true sensors like these would give your robot data about the 3D world, but still, what does a robot do with this information? How can it take in sensor data from the world and do something meaningful with it? Today I'll be introducing you to transformation matrices, one of the more useful mathematical techniques that I have learned. Because this technique can mathematically represent movement in 3D space, it can be used for a wide range of topics, not just robotics. By the end of these transformation videos, you will have several tools to tackle many issues that appear in robotics. Now from my experience, this topic is often overlooked in many courses, and when it isn't, it's presented in a very convoluted way. I'll try my best to explain this topic as simply as I can while giving you examples on how you can apply this technique in practice. Now it would be useful to know some linear algebra for what I'm about to show you, but even if you don't, don't worry. You'll still be able to understand the underlying concepts. So what are transformation matrices? A transformation matrix is a 4x4 matrix that describes the rotation and translation with respect to something else. Or in other words, how an object is transformed with respect to another object. Take a robotic arm for example. Transformation matrices can be used to tell what angle the servos need to be to reach the desired position in space. Or maybe an autonomous underwater vehicle needs to reach and align itself with several different obstacles in the water. Transformation matrices could be used to tell how all the obstacles are rotated and translated with respect to the underwater robot or even how the obstacles are rotated and translated between each other. Let's first start by taking a deeper look into assigning coordinate frames to objects. In order to fully describe an object in 3D space, you need its rotation and translation with respect to some reference frame. And in order to do that, you must give an object a frame as well. It's useful to put a frame on all objects of interest because it gives us a more defined description when rotating and translating the object. So if I said to rotate this object by 30 degrees, there could be several different end configurations. But if I said to rotate by positive 30 degrees about its x-axis, then we'll know exactly what the object will look like after that rotation. In this case, I named the reference frame 0 and the object's frame 1. The difference between the object's frame and the reference frame is the transformation matrix. So whenever you see this type of notation, it can be read as the transformation of frame 1 with respect to frame 0. Or it could also be read as the transformation to get from frame 0 to frame 1. So what exactly is the mathematics behind the transformation? As it turns out, the math is pretty elegant. Transformations consist of a 4x4 matrix. Within this 4x4 matrix, there's a 3x3 section that is reserved for rotation and a 3x1 section that is reserved for translation. The bottom row will always contain three zeros in the bottom left and a one in the bottom right. Now there's some really cool properties when you can represent a transformation in this form, but I'll cover them in the next videos. I'd like to keep these videos relatively short so it doesn't become too overwhelming. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.